Okay, so if I'm being 100% honest, I wasn't extremely happy with all the pulls we got from the first Neon Dynasty set box. Uh, I had a lot of fun opening it, which is part of the experience of buying a box in general, but the pulls weren't quite there in terms of the financial value. So I went to my local game store this morning and we've got Neon Dynasty set box number two. Maybe we'll hit some of the bigger mythics this time. And if not, we'll have some fun opening some more packs. Um, so we're gonna do a box opening with this one. We'll go through it a little bit faster than the first one, but let's hop in. So I'm gonna put this down here, switch over to our second camera, pew pew. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up our classic Magic the Gathering plastic wrap. And I did read the box this time. Turns out there's uh, 30 packs per set box, which is a lot more than I thought it was. I thought it was like 25 or 26 or something. So we have our Neon Dynasty guaranteed foil and art card. That's interesting. I don't know if y'all can hear my neighbor stomping around in the background, but he's kind of a dick. So here we have the insert yet again, Meet Kaito. I wonder if it's the same insert for every single pack. It totally is. I guess that is the best way to mass produce something. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First one right here in the middle. Let me line this up a little bit neater and I'll go ahead and crack this open. Which, when I went to the game store this morning, I had the intention of buying a box after looking at a house. Uh, more on that later. But I had the intention of going there, buying a box, coming home, and recording. But I got sucked into another pre-release, which was free for me because I have a lot of store credit at the store. So I was able to just use that to get into the pre-release. And I built a much better deck than I did at the first pre-release that I did but I actually had a worse win-loss rate. And here we have the Springleaf Avenger as our first rare. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. And that has an Ninjutsu of four. Seems pretty good. It's like a, like a reusable E-Witness. And we have, uh, <laughs> they're reprinting Double Masters stuff in the list. That's a little bit odd to me. Anyway, number next, we have pack number two. Out of 30, now that we actually know the amount, that art is gorgeous. Ah, oh, I got it to the forest. I'm happy anytime I get any of those Yukio E, I think that's what they're called, art lands. Those are so pretty. I have Kindled Fury. Aki Warpaint. Aki Ember Keeper. Generous Visitor. I wonder how generous they are. They give you stuff plus one, so it's pretty generous. And here we have the Reckoner Bank Buster. I think we got that one last night as well. Oh, we got a foil ninja treatment. It's just a common, but just look at the foiling job on that. That is so pretty. Uh, put that in our foil commons pile. And we got another list card already. Uh, we'll just mix the list ones in with their designated rarities, I guess. Move on to the next pack. Oh, I open it off camera. Oh man, now they're gonna say that I cheated you uh, when this is the Tezzeret for... Clearly, that's what it's gonna be. We're gonna get like six Tezzerets in this box. Uh, light the way. We've got a Brute Suit. That rhymes. Props to whoever made that name. Oh, wait, wait, this one? You can tap an untapped artifact and counter target spell. That's nuts, it's a two cost counter spell. It's almost as good as just regular old counter spell which is not in the standard currently. Got some nice legendaries here. Boseju reaches Skyward, which I still think is really good. And here we have the Dragon Kami Reborn. And on the back, it gives us the Dragon Kami's Egg. Whenever it or a dragon you control dies, you can cast a creature spell from among cards you own in exile with hatch encounters on them without paying its mana cost. I guess you put stuff with hatch encounters on the front. Look at the top three cards. Oh, okay, so it's like you make an egg and the egg hatches into something big. I get the flavor of that. We got a foil a Weaver of Harmony. We saw that guy last night. Wow, another list card? We're hitting list cards like crazy today. I wonder if they upped the um, consistency of those in packs. That one is uncommon. Number next. How many are we on so far? I think we've done three. Open this pack up. So it wasn't a Tezzeret, so you know I didn't cheat. We got a foil planes. These are so, so gorgeous in foil. They're gorgeous without foil, but even more so, the foiling treatment on these is amazing. 
that in our lands pile. Got some ninja cards. We got Kami of Terrible Secrets. The Twisted Embrace. Shrine Steward. So Kinzu Smelter. Dragon Spark Reactor. About Behold the Unspeakable. And here we have the Biting Palm Ninja. It enters the battlefield with a menace counter on it. When it deals combat damage to a player, remove the menace counter. When you do, you can exile thing. We saw that last night, I'm pretty sure. Or in the last box. I don't know if I should say last night, because I don't know when I'm posting these videos. If I'm being 100% honest, and I don't want to be a dirty, rotten liar. But last night, in terms of video time, I'm just going to straighten all this stuff up a little bit. Not that it's even that organized anywhere. Oh my goodness. This pack is not open and easy. We have a nice pilot token. They're gonna drive us somewhere. Got some art. I think it's the first token we've gotten. Got the pretty island. Do do do. El Ganjo Suda. Sounds like, uh, I don't know if y'all remember the original Transformers movies. Not the original ones, the Michael Bay ones, but original as in when I was a kid. Because there was uh, one line that ruined the second movie for me. Granted, the second movie was not good anyway, but the suit up reminds me of when Optimus Prime was like, let's roll, and I just couldn't get past how cheesy that was, even when I was a kid. Here we got Oganjo, Seed of the Empire, which has a channel ability to deal four damage to target attacking or blocking creature. Not bad, not one of the channel lands that you really want. The one you really want is the green one, but that's okay. So far, nothing really hitting it out of the park. Maybe this set just doesn't want to give Chris good rares. Because I didn't get any value rares in either of the pre-releases I did either. There's a lot of good stuff in this set too. But we still got a whole box to go through, so we will continue. Last night, I'm not too upset about it being kind of a dud box. Because I did get the Froggy Boy that I wanted for my Froggy Boy deck. Which is the actual name of the deck on Moxfield if you want to go look for it. Befriending the Moths. Myojin of the Blooming Dawn. Remove an indestructible counter and create a 1-1 one -one for each permanent you control. That's pretty good. And we got the Double Strike and Lizard Claws. And here we have a Reckoner's Bargain and Foil. No Foil Rares, no Foil Uncommons yet. My arm is getting sore from holding the cards at an awkward angle in front of the camera. I told y'all I was going to figure out a better way to do this before the next video, but then I decided to do the next video today. Uh, the next card, we have a list card on the back again, since there's no token. That is pretty. I like the other planes art better. We have two foil planes now. We got some ninjas. This guy did some serious work in the pre-release today. I got three of them. That deck basically just built itself. Got some bronze plate thing. A rabbit battery. Oh, poor rabbit. Look at it. She's just like shooting it out of a cannon a little bit rude if you ask me have an upriser renegade but sage reaches skyward again a ruthless technomancer which is one of those commander rares oh that's the guy that makes treasures that's gonna be really good and a womp womp scrap alder oh no way this guy's like a 20 or 30 dollar card we got a dragon lord dramoka that's an amazing card to get from the list holy hell that's gonna go right down here Put the foil common right there. It's going to be really funny when the best rare I get out of this box is from the list. Yeah, Dragon Lord Dramoka went up in price since I bought the first copy for my Tiamat deck. We have a Samurai token, which means no list card. Surprised they put him on the list. Got some common lands, some uncommon cards common. Start to speed through this a little bit so this video is not 40 minutes long like the last one. Uh, here, for our rare... What is it? We've got another Farewell, which we'll see some commander play. I don't think it's any worth much, but it's a pretty decent removal spell for six. Because you get your fair choice of exiling any kind of permanent, pretty much. Except Planeswalkers. It uh, excludes Planeswalkers. I guess y'all can see me on my personal camera. My hands are at a very awkward angle. That's kind of on me. Some commons and uncommons. My neighbor, I don't know if y'all are hearing that back there. It's just like, stomp, stomp, stomp. That guy's a total fucking douche nozzle. Oh, 
this wasn't even a token. It was just uh, what's the list? Uh, I don't know, just really annoying when your neighbor on a top floor apartment owns an Alaskan Malamute. Which I guess that's partially just as much the fault of the people that own the apartment complex as it is the guy who moved into the top floor. Just, you'd think somebody would be a little bit more considerate than saying, I have a giant miniature horse and I'm gonna move into the top floor of an apartment complex and ruin everybody's life around me. It's like, guy either is just a really inconsiderate asshole, which is what I'm leaning towards, or he's uh, just not even thinking about how he affects other people, which I guess lends to the definition of inconsiderate asshole. Dude just has a zero invoke the ancients. This actually ruined me a couple times today in the pre-release. I'm gonna first foil uncommon. Uh, I don't know, if I had a massive dog. I don't know, go look up pictures of an Alaskan Malamute. They're really, really cute. They look like good boys. But I don't, I'm a big fan of the theory that there are no such thing as bad dogs, just bad owners. Mm, this guy is a horrible owner. First of all, you shouldn't have an Alaskan Malamute cooped up in an apartment because it's just not the right environment for a dog like that. I'll stop complaining though. It's just something to talk about. But then to get some steam off my chest. Eater of Virtue. That's a fun one. I don't think it's going to be super playable in anything even remotely competitive. Oh, we got a... Gal uh, what is this token? There it is. It's in focus now. It's a construct. Not a lot of tokens this time around. I don't actually know how many boosters we've gone through so far. Here, we have another art card. Got a regular ass plane. It's not even a pretty one. Maybe we'll get something good to make up for it. Some uncommons, commons. Let's get to the rares. Let's just cut to the chase and see if we get those mythics that mean a lot. And here we have a Ganjo Uprising. A little bit better than I thought it was last night, or last whenever you watched the previous video, I guess. Because they get X creatures minus one. So if you do X for one, you get a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance for three. Not like the worst deal in the world. Not the best deal in the world either. But it could be worse. Old magic cards, uh, some of them used to be way worse. Uh oh. I'm disorganized here. Gotta straighten that back up. <laughs> Go ahead and get another spirit token. The art on that is really cool. They have a few different spirit tokens in this set, I believe. We have a stamped art card. Got a nice planes. We have a Fang of Shigeki. That guy is so good in limited. Spell Pierce. Good to see that in Standard again. Granted, I don't play Standard, but it's just good, I don't know, to have another reprint of Spell Pierce. Why not? One cost counter spells. Good times. March of the Swirling Mist. Are we going to have another completely dud box? We've gotten nothing even remotely worth anything this time around, other than the Dragon Lord Dromoka. So I guess it's not a complete dud. Got a mountain. We have a Blade Blizzard Kitsune. And the other really cool thing about opening boxes, because I, I also lean more towards uh, collector boxes, just because you get more rares out of those. But the real benefit to opening boxes is like three years from now, be building a deck and you'll be like, man, I need this uh, common or uncommon. What set was it from? Oh, it was from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I opened some of that. Maybe I have it. Uh, same things happen to me a lot of times when I'm building commander decks. Uh, I'll need something. We got light pause again. I'll need something from like Innistrad or Scars of Mirrodin, and it ends up being like a five or six dollar uncommon because it just turned out to be really good later. And uh, it turns out that I just have it sitting in a box somewhere because I opened so much of those sets. Uh, same with uh, Return to Ravnica. I was looking for a Vandal Blast, which is an absolute staple. Wow, look at that art. I guess the Ninja Commander, right? Uh, it's an absolute commander staple. And I just happened to have a couple copies of Vandal Blast lying around, just like up to five or six bucks at a point for an uncommon. So you're thinking, it's not that much money. Or you're thinking, wow, it's a lot of money. I guess it depends on your age group, uh, how much you think a lot is. Because let me tell you, when you're an adult, a hundred bucks ain't what it used to be or what it seemed like when you were a kid. When I was in uh, middle school, or elementary school, maybe even kindergarten, our teachers had us do this exercise where we had to tell them we got another Myojin and then for our rare we got the Lion Sash and another foil common but it's a new Nuki so it's cute 
we got a spirit token. So in our kindergarten class, they had a student exercise where they said, if you had a hundred dollars, what would you spend it on? And my naive little kindergarten ass was like, I would buy a mansion and a gold guitar. But 100 bucks isn't even like a tenth of rent anymore per month. It's nuts. Those art cards, they keep getting them upside down. <laughs> I think they're flipped in the packs. I think they're there just to throw you off and make you open your packs upside down. Some guy in QA is probably laughing his ass off right now. It's like, look at that moron. He's opening his packs upside down and I did that. I did that. That's me. He's just really spiteful towards the world for some reason. And here we have March of the Swirling Mist up to X target creatures phase out. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. oh my God, oh my God. We hit it, we hit it. We hit the alt art Tezzeret. Look at that. This is by um, a really famous Japanese artist. I can't, their name is on the top of my head. I can't remember it off the top, but oh my God, it's so pretty. We got the full art one. We finally hit something that I actually really, really wanted and needed. Oh, that is gorgeous. Uh, now you know how I get when I actually get excited over opening something. And here we have an air elemental as our list card. Wow, that is beautiful. I'm tempted to just like go ahead and put that in a sleeve. Uh, I put that in the non-foil and that in the foil. But it'll be safe on the play mat here, I think. Unless I spill my glass of water. That would be pretty upsetting. I'd still play it. I would still 100% play it. That is gorgeous. Upside down mountain. Let's see, somebody in QA put those art cards in upside down just to just to mess with us. 100%, they're gonna be like, those, 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 everybody who, who's opening packs is gonna be like, did I open it upside down? And then they see the art card and they're gonna move the art card and they're gonna be like, God, I just flipped it. Ugh, so much extra effort. I just wasted energy and I have to eat more calories today and make up for it. Got a fancy, that was in a weird spot in the pack, huh? Oh, I guess that's the wild card spot of soul transfer exile target creature or planeswalker return target creature or planeswalker from your graveyard to your hand cool oh we looked at something similar to that um last night but it was five cost a foil land and a nice m21 can't believe they're putting m21 stuff on the list already that was last year come on guys give us a give me that sensei's divining top or a vampiric tutor here we have, that's interesting art. Let's take a look at that. What is that from? Looks like this person's getting digitized. They got some Tron action going on. Shove that away. But yeah, so this morning, the goal was to go look at a townhouse, which I am actually offering on. Maybe I'll have news on that by the time this video goes live. But I am actually offering on this townhouse. It's like 2,300 square feet. Could not ask for a better location. It's like eight minutes from the game store. Um, but... Uh, it's a competitive market, so we'll see if I get it or not. But that was what I was doing this morning. Then I was going to just stop by the game store, grab a box, and that's when I got sucked into the pre-release. The manager at the game store always knows how to bully me into doing limited events. And I do always end up having a good time. This is like a worse version of Replenish, but it also hits artifacts. So maybe a really good late game play in like a mono white deck in commander good luck getting the mana fixing for it though unless you're mono white of course <laughs> if you're mono white the mana fixing for all white is uh pretty easy oh wait that's common it just has a weird set symbol because it's from the list i'm so stoked we got the full art tezzeret that is gorgeous and we got a dragon lord dramoka i think this box is already like good to go paid for done and done got our fancy dude riding uh giant fish what a way to spend a sunday afternoon it's right oh wait today's saturday uh, that guy has too much free time we have a futurist operative we got some nice ninjas here what else is going on in my life other than magic not a whole lot i thought more and more about building that reality chip deck though since i pulled one in the pre-release last night and that's gonna be very degenerate i might just like I kind of talked myself into it, and then I think I talked myself back out of it just because I don't think it's going to be any fun to play against. Got another rare vehicle. When it attacks, you can sacrifice another artifact or creature. If you do, put a plus one on it, and it gains menace until end of turn. Crew two. That seems pretty good. Oh, we got a rare shiny of the white march. Marching's not very fun, though, like in real life. I'd rather just walk somewhere casually. I guess I'll put foils here. 
You know what would be even cooler than the full art Tez? A foil full art Tez. But I don't think that's going to happen. Now the next hit we're... Oh, ah, wait for the camera to stop shaking. Sorry about that. I knocked my microphone, and it's attached to the same table that the camera stand is. So if I knock the microphone, it knocks the camera, and it's a little bit of a frustrating setup. This beautiful art right here. Which again, the orientation's all wrong. That's okay. Sometimes it'd be like that. That's more cards. Experimental synthesizer. I kind of talked myself out of the reality chip deck because I'm trying to build decks that are fun to play for me. But also, you want to build decks that people enjoy playing against, so they'll want to play with you again. We got the Kami of Transients, and another Foil Rare. This is a Thousand Face Shadow, but in shiny. Cool. Remember, next, we still got a few layers of packs in the box here. Then we got a Mech Titan core thing. So, sorry, I keep looking over there because uh, my neighbor is like... Stomping. I don't know how he doesn't have like broken shins from the impact of how loud he stomps around. This art card's upside down, but the pack is right side up. We figured out their tricks. We figured out your tricks, you mean wizards employee. I was trying to think of the right word for that, but it just didn't come to mind. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments down below. A circuit mender. Got a malicious malfunction. Covert technician. Whatever the hell. Ooh, we got Explosive Singularity. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Uh, one less to cost for each creature tapped this way. Deals 10 damage to any target. Does not seem very good, but it is a mythic. So, gotta get the bulk mythics with the good mythics, I guess. That's just the nature of magic. Although, you'd think they would take the good, the like the bulk mythics, and downgrade them to rare, since they do about the same amount as Arreras. But that's how they get ya. That's how they get their money. God, he's upside down, but the art on that. I think it's the same art, or similar art. Definitely the same style as the Biobox promo. Which is a really cool. Jukai Trainee. Regent's Authority, which look at that fox. That is great art. It looks like a children's storybook. Intercessor. <laughs> Some of these words are hard to read. This is a great way to boost your vocabulary. Except for the made up words, you might use like Kami. Is Kami a real word? Maybe. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe it's like spirit or something. Thousand Face Shadow. That guy just keeps showing up. We got like a billion of them. Why can't I get a billion Tezes, you know? Give the people what they want, wizards. We want billions of Tezes. When I say Tez, I mean Tezzeret. I'm just abbreviating to make saying it easier, but explaining it kind of ruins the point of that. We've got the art card, a regular ass land. And through all these commons and uncommons here. Crackling Emergence. That is some really cool art. Oh, it looks like a pet that you probably wouldn't want to keep in the house, especially if you have carpet or wood floors. All that shit would just catch on fire. You'd have to have, like, tile to have that as a pet. Got an invigorating hot spring. Tales of Master Sashiro. And here we have Yoshimaru! One of the commander cards. Oh, this is such a good boy. Look how good of a boy he is. If it'll come into focus on the camera. So cute. I love this one. Whenever another legendary permanent enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one counter on it. And he's just such a good boy. I shook the camera again. That's my bad. Just look how good of a boy he is. Oh, he's so cute. Put him in our mythic pile. Oh my god, and we got the white dragon too. Oh, what's this one do when it dies? Because I know what the red one does. Oh, you get to put stuff, you get to cheat stuff straight into play with this one. That's pretty cool. And we have Tamiyo's safekeeping and a secret lair ultra pro token for that ultra pro creature. It has attack 16, defense 16. And if you go to ultrapro.com, you get a CMC discount on it. We've got some more art. Another beautiful mountain. We've got the Rat Ninja. Not the rare one, though. The rare Rat Ninja seems interesting. All of the ninjas 
Uh, they always catch me off guard at the pre-release or when I'm playing in the limited because I keep forgetting that ninjutsu is a mechanic that's back and you don't block something, you're going to really regret it, but you also don't want to block because then you lose your dude. We got a really cool glow treatment, Weaver of Harmony. Look at that. It's not foil or anything, but that glow treatment is beautiful. And we got Satsuki Living Lore. This one puts lore counters on each saga you control. So this speeds up your sagas. This is 100% going to be a saga commander. And like, obviously, uh, like I think sagas will actually be playable with some of the ones that are printed in this set. So previously, sagas, they weren't that great. There were a couple really good ones, but now the ones that flip into creatures are really cool. Honestly, I had a lot of fun playing them too in, the, in these pre-release tournaments. Got six packs left, it looks like. Let's see if we can pull some more really cool mythics. Maybe we'll get an Atsushi. Why are these upside down? Why you gotta do this to me, Wizards employee? Why you got to be that way? Why? Got some neat ninja art treatments, which again, these borders. Oh, it's an uncommon. These borders are gorgeous. Got a vehicle. They need to, uh, I wonder if they're going to do a crossover at some point, like a secret lair with like Lamborghini or Mercedes or something. And they'll make one of these mechs just like a straight up Lambo. That would be pretty funny. Oh, we got Kaito Shizuki. He's the nin ninja. Kaito Shizuki. That's how you pronounce it, I believe. Don't quote me on that 100%. This is the ninja commander that uh, phases out if he entered the battlefield that turn. So he is hard to deal with. We got two Planeswalkers this time around. Not even one the first time around. That's pretty cool. Uh, still looking for that Boseju, though, because that land is cracked. Diggity dog. Upside down. Yeah, look at that, though. That's beautiful. Beautiful mountain. That's the mountain art that I prefer. We got the two different mountain arts right here. I uh, definitely prefer the one that's an actual mountain rather than, like, the little town. This looks cleaner, in my opinion. Here we have Silver Fur Master. We've got the Unstoppable Ogre. We got You Are Already Dead. I love the flavor on that one because you block someone and they're like, Haha, I just hit you with my 8 8 creature. Suck it, nerd. And then you just play that after you blocked with a 1 1 chump blocker and their 8 8 dies. It's gross. Uh, anyway. Continue going through these. Got four more packs left after this. Let's see what this rare is. We got Kotose Silent Spider. That's a whole lot of text. I'll let you just like look up what it does online or pause the video. You do you. No judgment here. Also got March of Otherworldly Light. I think it's the third one we've got of that in this box. It's nuts how many duplicates there are. I think there would be some sort of uh, safekeeping against that many duplicates in production. But then, how would they make their money? Because they don't want everybody to just get really fancy, rare, expensive cards all the time. They'd kind of ruin the secondary market that they're not allowed to acknowledge. Here we have... Wow! Look at that art. Sony wants to tell me what that's from. That is gorgeous. Like, which card that's from? Oh, some more ninjas. Cameo safekeeping. Wanderer's thing. Oh, we just have to hit Beseju or Jenga Taxis, and then we're, like, set. We're super good. We're Gucci. We're golden. Right here we have Tribute to Hirobi. I got this one in foil in the pre-release today. It makes rats, then it takes all the rats. So that's pretty fun. And if you're playing against someone that has a pack rat deck, you can just completely screw them. Like make that deck, carry it around with you, and save it just for that one asshole that's running pack rats in Commander. Then you play the enchantments, and when it flips, you take all of their pack rats. And a construct token, which means no list card here. A regular ass mountain. Guardians of Ahorhu or whatever. Aboro. Okay, wow, I can't read worth shit. First, I'm reading at a weird angle because of the way the camera is set up. Web Spinner Cuff. Acquisition Octopus. A Leech Gauntlet. Love these reconfigure cards. They're super cool. Super handy too. Restoration of Iganjo. This one just gets you a planes for three. And then it also turns into a thing that gives you tokens. So, not terrible. It's not the Jenga Taxis we're looking for, you know, but 
is our ga our construct token. I keep wanting to say golem, but uh, I shook the camera again. Look at me doing that thing. Flip through. Got our nice treasure token on the back. My favorite treasure token is still the double masters foil one that's actually like a treasure box. Uh, that's just me personally. I want my treasure to look like treasure so I can feel like smog whenever I play a uh, Dockside Extortionist. <laughs> or uh, even better, though, feel like a, feel like a higher upper class echelon, whatever the hell person. I'm using all the wrong vocabulary here. Feel like a higher upper class like tax person when you play Smothering Tithe. Pay your pay your taxes, shillings. We got Hidetsugu consumes all. I wasn't a huge fan of the sagas until I played them in the pre-release. This one destroys each non-land permanent with value one or less. Exile all graveyards, and then you get Vessel of the All-Consuming. Whenever it, it's a trample with 3-3, three, three. whenever it deals damage, put a plus one on it. And whenever it deals damage to a player, if it's dealt 10 or more damage to that player, they lose the game. Oh, it has to be this turn though. So if you buff this, like you can just make people lose the game on the spot. That's kind of sick. It's gonna be a huge removal target for sure. That is a mythic rare. That goes in the mythic pile. Automated artificer. Put that down right there. And here is our treasure token. This looks like a, this looks like an ad for like a casino or something. I know those aren't coins, but it looks like coins like bursting out of a sphere or something. Like, ooh, come here and you'll win all these coins in the slot machines. I don't know what kind of accent that was. Just like a, a weird old man. This is upside down yet again. You have to like flip these over and post. Don't hold me to that. I'm actually recording at a lower resolution this time so I can do less post work. Not this. Let's see what we get for the last pack. Anything spicy. Because we already got a super spicy thing. And another spicy list card right here. Oh, my second finger is pointing. But we're still looking for that Gene Gataxius, which I've seen people draw, uh, get him at the pre-release every time. We're ending on a disappointing Ogre Head Helm, and oh, we got Teachings of Kieran. So, not huge on the myth. Oh, we got a Witch Ma Nephilim. No idea if that's worth anything or not, but fancy little rare list card there. And Teachings of Kieran, which mills things and makes spiders, puts counters on things. And then it turns into a lot of utility, but a lot of text too. So I'm not going to sit here and read that to you. I'm not your storybook reading person. Go to the local library for that if those kind of buildings still exist. Anyway, that was our second Kamigawa Neon Dynasty booster box opening. I'm a whole lot happier with this box than I was with the first one. I was just going to throw the box, but then I couldn't bring myself to do it because I want to put the cards in it later. But I was a whole lot happier. Flip back to the second cam again. Super happy that we got uh, especially the full art Tezzeret. But also Kaito is going to be pretty fun to play in a Demir deck. Because he's good card advantage. But he's also difficult to deal with the turn he comes in. And he's a 3 cost. Which is absolutely nuts. 3 cost and 4 cost Planeswalkers are where it's at. And again, one more time. God, look how pretty that art is. That is amazing. I love this. So that is our second Kamigawa Neon Dynasty set box opening. Let me know if you want to see more content like this. I really enjoy doing these box openings. Uh, maybe I could open some secret lairs or open a collector's box next weekend when I can actually get my hands on one of those. Uh, but until next time, if you enjoy this kind of content, hit that like and subscribe down below. Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of thing. And I will see you all in the next video, whenever that is. Yeah.